Okay, wait, the, um, this lecture is, uh, this video is about the banach alaoglu theorem, uh, one of my favorite theorem. Uh, it doesn't look that useful, but it's very useful in practice, um, and I just like the name. Okay, so what's the statement? Uh, the statement is very simple. So you have a banach space, and it says that the unit ball in the jewel of that ba Banach space, that is all the li linear functionals uh, that are bounded by one, uh, that this set is compact in the weak star topology. Now remember what the weak star topology is on the jewel. It's the smallest topology that makes uh, the evaluation maps continuous. Okay, so the evaluation map is this very simple map that takes an element of x star, the linear functional, and maps it to the uh, value of that linear functional at the point x. Okay, so for every x in my space, I have an evaluation map. Okay, and remember that, so x star, uh, x hat, obviously by construction, is an ele element of the jewel of the jewel. And so we have this embedding of x in x hat and x hat. Um, and that embedding is exactly the evaluation map. And you have equality if and only if you are reflexive. That's the definition. So in particular, if x is reflexive, the uh, weak star topology on x star is actually the same as the weak topology on x star. Because the weak topology makes all the bounded linear functional con on x star continuous. And since for reflexive, you have equality between x, every linear functional is evaluation map, you have it. All right. Um, and th so that means that uh, the banach alu theorem, if x is reflex, is even simpler. It just tells you that the unit ball is compact in the weak topology on the dual space. So that's even stronger. Now, if x is an Hilbert space, there's even more structure there, right? Because x uh, star is equal to x self joule, that's the Riest representation theorem. Every linear functional of a Hilbert space can, is essentially a point in the space when you take the inner product. And in that case, um, uh, so you have that the unit ball of the Hilbert space is actually uh, compact. Uh, in the weak topology of the helper space, okay? So this uh, theorem is useful uh, f for uh, many things. It's in particular useful uh, when you know that uh, the jewel is actually sequentially compact, okay? So, uh, so, when, so when can that happen? So when is compact equivalent to sequentially compact? When you have a metric space, for example, and so there's some uh, there's some uh, um, so if you know a priori that uh, uh, x star is uh, a metric space, uh, then uh, then you can actually you have that this space is sequentially compact. So in particular, if you have a sequence of um, linear functional that are bounded, okay, it could be one here, but obviously you could scale it and and it still remain compact. So any ball is compact in the weak star topology. And if on top of that, your space is, is X star is metric, then there exists um, a subsequence that converges. Okay, so that's very uh, useful sometimes to show uh, existence. Um, of a, of a certain functional. Okay, so now I just want to discuss the proof, and that's the point of this video. 
uh, because there's a couple of notions that are important. So I'm just going to read the proof and point out some, some important facts. Okay, so this is actually Tikhonov's theorem in action. So Tikhonov's theorem tells you that um, if you have, um, uh, if you take a, uh, the product, uh, if you have a, you take the product of compact uh, spaces, then the um, uh, product topology, the, the um, sorry, the uh, the product space actually compact in the product topology. Okay, that's a con consequence of the axiom of choice. All right. Now, what's the link between the Kronoff theorem and the banach theorem is you consider, um, okay, the set AX, which is all the set, uh, all the real numbers lambda, such that the absolute value of lambda is small or equal to the absolute value, the norm of X, okay? So these are obviously compact set in the usual topology on R, okay? X is fixed. Now we consider the product space, and this could be uncomfortable. That's why you use the axiom of choice. It's a pretty powerful uh, statement. And so you take the product over all your point in, in x. Okay, so this x is really a fancy x. And so this is a compact set in the product topology. Okay. Now, a point. Um, so here's the important uh, correspondence between the product topology and the uh, I mean, these sets and the linear functionals. If I take any element in that set, this is a, a function from my space X to R. Why? Uh, because what happens is if I take a point here, then every X gives me a value, okay, say lambda, and that value I can think of it is, it's exactly, I can think of it as the value of the, of the function at the point x, okay? So if you want the x-coordinate of that element is the value of the function, okay? And so you do that for every x-coordinate. So for every x, you get a value, so I have a function, okay? In that particular case, this function is bounded by the norm of x by the definition, okay? So in particular, a linear function is a function from x to r, so the unit ball here is um, an element, uh, sorry, it's, it's a subset of A. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now the product topology, okay, um, on A or on the unit ball, um, it's exactly uh, the weak star topology, okay? Why is that? It's because the product topology is always the topology that makes the projection, okay, from the from the the space to one of its coordinate continuous. This is the smallest topology that makes the projection, okay, from the product to one coordinate continuous. Okay, and this is exactly what the weak star topology is for for L, because the x coordinate corresponds to evaluate L at x. Okay. Therefore, the product topology, product topology is equivalent to the weak star topology. Okay. Now, now you're done because you know from the, uh, you're almost done because you know from Tikhonov that the product topology makes this space compact, okay? And so this set is a subset of A, so it should be compact if you show that it's closed, because any closed set of a compact set is compact, okay? That's general statement of compact uh, subset. So the only thing that remains to prove is that the su this unit ball as a subset of this A is compact, uh, is closed. It will imply it's compact, okay? And this is easy to show. You can use nets, but uh, it's the same thing as using sequences. So just assume again that you're, uh, you have, a, so just assume that you have a countable basis. If you don't like that, you can use nets. It's the same thing. So, so the only thing that uh, you have to show uh, that it's closed 
So you have uh, uh, ln say that converges to, to ln the product topology or the weak star topology. Uh, you have to show uh, that it's still in the unit ball, so it's bounded by one, and it's linear, right? So you have a bounded linear functional bounded by one. Uh, the fact it's bounded by one, it's because, well, you remain in L, that you remain in, in A, okay? And A, everything in A is uh, bounded by one. And uh, the last thing to show is that it's linear. This limit is linear. But since it's the limit of linear functional, it's just direct. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to comment a little bit on the, troop, on the proof because you have this nice correspondence between the product topology and the weak star topology. Okay. And you see the evaluation map, if you want, has the projection on the coordinate at a given x. All right, okay, so this is the banach theorem, and uh, we're going to see some of its consequences on Wednesday. Thank you for listening.